Hello, welcome to Prajame Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 49, Access Modifiers. In this session, we'll talk about different access modifiers that can be applied for type members. For types themselves, you can only apply two different access modifiers, which we will be talking about in a later session. In this session, we'll also talk about private, public, and protected members in a great detail. And in the next session, we'll be talking about the other two access modifiers, internal and protected internal. And to understand this session properly, it's better if you have a good understanding of the difference between types and type members. All right. In C Sharp, there are actually five different access modifiers, private, protected, internal, protected internal, and public. In this session, as I told you, we'll be talking about the first three. Actually, private, protected, and public. In the next session, we'll talk about internal and protected internal. Okay, so private members are available only within the containing type, whereas public members are available anywhere, and there is no restriction on public members. So let's see what do we mean by this, and it's very simple to understand. Okay. Let's have a customer class, so public class customer, and this class is going to have a private integer field. So private int underscore id is my cust private field, and I'm going to create a public property. So public int id, and you know to expose that property, we can use a get and a set accessor so return underscore id and we will set underscore id to the value and by the way if you if you don't know what properties are we have a video recorded on properties please check that video all right now if you look at this customer class it's pretty simple we have got one private field underscore id and one public field id okay now since this pri this field is private this is available only within the containing type. So what's the containing type for this file? This class customer. Okay, so this field is available only within this customer class. Look at this, I'm able to access this here. I'm, I'm able to return that and I'm able to set a value for that. Okay, but only within this type. If I try to access this field outside of this class, I will get a compiler error. Let's see now how we do that. Now, outside of this class, so in the main class, I have another class here. So in the main class, I have a main method. And in this main method, I am creating an instance of this customer class. So customer C1 is equal to new customer. And now, since this field is an instance field, again, we have a video recorded you know, on the difference between static and instance field. If you're not sure what, what do we mean by static and instance fields, please check that video series. So since this ID is an instance field, you know, you can access that on the instance of the class. So I'm creating this customer class, instance C1. And if I try to access C1 dot, look at this. Do I see the underscore ID in the IntelliSense? I don't. Okay, so this is actually a hint to you. You're not allowed to access that. But if I try to access that by just typing the name, okay, maybe I'm trying to print that, let's say. You can see a red squiggly already there. It says customer dot underscore ID is inaccessible due to its protection level. So because of the access modifier you have there, it's inaccessible. Okay, it's private, so that field is available only within that customer class. Outside of the customer class, it's not available, so that's private. If you try to access that, you will get a compiler error, inaccessible due to its protection level. On the other hand, this ID fee property is actually public. So public, it is accessible anywhere no restrictions whatsoever within the class outside of the class even in a different assembly we'll talk about different accessing members from different assemblies in a later session but public member is basically available anywhere there is no restriction whatsoever so if i try to print when i say c dot id look at that i am able to access that and if i try to build this 
I will get no compiler errors. So on the status bar, if you look at that, build succeeded. So very simple and straight. If you look at this slide here, private members only within the containing class. What is the accessibility? Only within the containing class. Whereas public member, anywhere, no restrictions. So if you look at this five different access modifiers, private you know, members will have least restriction i mean highest restriction it's only available within the class containing class whereas public there is no restrictions so these two are the two extreme ends and protected internal protected internal falls in between them which we'll be talking about you now in a bit all right so public anywhere no restrictions now let's go ahead and look at protected access modifier what do we mean by protected access modifier and what access level does it have and to understand that let's create a simple class okay we already have this customer class and if you look at this customer class what we will do is we will create a protected maybe protected int and I'm saying ID okay so within this class this ID field is protected so if a field, I mean, if a member is protected, then that member is available within the containing class and to any class that derives from the containing class. Okay. Now, if you look at this, is main class deriving from the containing class? No. So obviously, this ID will not be available here. Look at that. You already have a red squiggly customer.id is inaccessible due to its protection level. But on the other hand, let's create another class so public basically my customers are of two types maybe corporate customers and retail customers so customer is the base class for every type of customer in my business okay so I'm gonna have another customer called let's say corporate customer and this class is going to inherit from the customer class okay now corporate customer inheriting from customer class and we know that a protected member you know is available protected members are available within the containing type or class and to the types or classes that derive from the containing type okay so since our corporate customer class is deriving from the customer class you can access this protected member but on the other hand your main class is not deriving from your customer class so you have that Red squiggly there, a compiler error uh, showing ID is inaccessible due to its protection level. Okay, now let's say I'm gonna have a method here, maybe public void print ID. And now let's create a corporate customer object. So corporate customer CC is equal to new corporate customer. Since this field is an instance field we need to create an instance of the derived class object and then cc dot look at this id i am able to access that okay and maybe i can set it a value of 101 if i wish to okay so protected members are available within the containing class and to the classes that derive from the containing class if a class doesn't derive from the containing class then that protected member will not be available to that class that's why your main class is not able to access that id and by the way to access protected members you know to access the base class protected members in the derived class you can either use the derived class object here corporate customer class is deriving from the customer class so we create an instance of that class and on that instance uh, we are invoking that field okay now instead of doing this what you can also do is you can basically use base keyword base dot look at this ID base in the derived class method actually refers to base class instance so that's that's why you are able to access that property base dot ID or simply you can use this keyword as well this dot ID will also give access to it okay so basically if you want to access base class protected members in the derived class you can either use the derived class object or you can use the this keyword or you can use the base keyword but if you try to do any of that in a class that doesn't inherit from the base customer class here in this example 
you get accessibility error okay so here you can't even say base dot base dot you cannot use any you know you cannot basically invoke the id here because why there is no base class for this this class is a standalone class it's not inheriting from any of the base class okay so that's about protected so if you look at protected members they are available within the containing type and to the types that derive from the containing type and in the next session we'll be talking about internal and protected internal on this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET and C-Sharp interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a good